Hello and welcome to UTT Business Router's Basic Configuration. In this series of videos, we'll talk about the basic configuration of UTT Business Routers. And this is the first part. It corresponds to the network menu in the router's graphic user interface. Now UTT Business Routers includes N518W, AC750W, AC750GW, and AC1220GW. Here we have a question for you. How to manage two subnets with the UTT Business Router? Let's suppose one for PCs and the other one is for guest devices. By the end of this video, we'll try to solve this question. You can refer to this topology. The first part is WAN. There are three types of WAN connections, DHCP, Static IP, and PPPoE. You can adjust them according to the ISP settings. Let's take a look at the demo. Click Network. Click WAN. In DHCP mode, the WAN port obtains an IP address automatically from the network it is connected to. In static IP mode, you should have several parameters which are provided by the ISP, such as IP address, subnet mask, gateway IP address, and primary DNS server. In PPPoE mode, you have an account assigned by the ISP with which you could dial to the ISP PPPoE server and access the internet. The second part is load balancing. This function takes effect when you have more than one WAN connections. There are two load balancing modes full load balancing and partial load balancing. In full load balancing mode, all the connections are primary connections. The weight of each connection is decided by the bandwidth of that connection. LAN data will be assigned to each connection according to its weight. Thus, the more its bandwidth, the more data will go through it. In partial load balancing, only when all the primary connections don't work, the backup connection will start working. Once a primary connection is back to normal, it will automatically switch back to the primary connection. In order to make the failover more efficiently, we need to configure detection and bandwidth. The system provides connection detection for monitoring connections in real time. Once the connection fails, Traffic will be redirected to other available connections to ensure the continuation of services. We need to configure each WAN port one by one. The recommended configuration is as follows. Detection interval, 1. Retry times, 3. Detection target. The detection target can be set to default gateway or other IP addresses. It is recommended to set it to 8.8.8.8, .8 which is the very famous Google DNS. And please set the bandwidth of this WAN port according to your actual WAN bandwidth. The router will ping the detection target according to the detection interval and retry times. In our case, the router will ping 8.8.8.8 .8 three times every second. Once it got no response for several times, that is in seconds, the system will delete the route of this WAN IP and redirect all the traffic to other available connections. After configuring the detection and bandwidth, we can see WAN load balancing status in the load balancing list. Now is the demo for load balancing. Let's click Network. Click Load Balancing. We can see partial load balancing and full load balancing modes here. And in partial load balancing, there are primary connections and backup connections. Let's click Detection and Bandwidth. 
there when one and when two in our case. The detection interval is set to one. The retry time is set to three. In detection target, we can set gateway IP address or other IP address. If we set other IP address, we can enter an address here. The bandwidth here is the bandwidth of this WAN port. Don't forget to save. After the configuration of detection and bandwidth, we can see them, see all the parameters here in this list. Okay, let's get back to LAN. LAN is the third part of the network menu. On the LAN settings page, we can configure IP address, subnet mask, MAC address, and interface mode. The IP address here is the LAN IP address of the router. If you click the advanced options, you'll find that up to four LAN IP addresses can be configured here. This is quite useful sometimes. The interface mode should be left as auto unless there is any special requirement. Okay, let's take a look. Click LAN. There are IP address, subnet mask, MAC address, and interface mode. Click Advanced Options. We can set other IP addresses here. Let's go on. The fourth part is DHCP Server. With DHCP, computers request IP addresses and networking parameters automatically from a DHCP server, reducing the need for network administrator or user to configure these settings manually. Once the DHCP server is enabled, the router will serve as a DHCP server. If you don't want to use ISP DNS, it is recommended to set the DNS you want here. It will be assigned to LAN hosts. If DNS proxy is enabled, the router will serve as a DNS server. It is for the special requirements of some users. We can disable it while it is not needed. The second tab in the DHCP server menu is static DHCP. This function allows you to manually bind an IP address to a host's MAC address. Thus, that PC will always obtain the same IP address whenever it is connected to the router. Now let's take a look at the next tab, DHCP Auto Binding. There are two options on this page, DHCP Auto Binding and DHCP Auto Deleting. When DHCP Auto Binding is enabled, once a LAN host obtains an IP address from the router, the router will immediately bind the IP address and MAC address of the host. When DHCP Auto Deleting is enabled, the router will automatically delete a DHCP auto binding item if the corresponding host releases the IP address initiatively or its lease expires. The next tab in this menu is DHCP client list. In this list, we can find information of all DHCP clients. Now let's take a look at the demo for DHCP server. First, let's look at the DHCP server settings page. Now look, the DNS proxy is here. And please disable it when you don't need to use it. Then the next tab is static IP. We can always add. You can input username and IP address and MAC address here. Or you can enable DHCP auto binding and save and you can click edit here and change the name for this device like this and save 
And the last one is DHCP client list. You can see all the LAN hosts here. Next is DDNS. The device supports two DDNS providers right now, which is Stein DNS and NoIP. And we're working on to support more DDNS providers. Let's take a look. We can select no IP and die DNS here. Then we need to enter hostname, username, and password here. Also, we can change the interface here. If you want to bind it to Win1, you can select Win1, or if you want to bind it to Win2, you can select Win2. And then please save. Next is UPnP. Let's look at the demo directly. Click UPnP. When UPnP is enabled, the router will automatically forward ports for LAN hosts. It is often used when you have a server host in your LAN, such as a PC as a web server, an Xbox, an IP phone, etc. If it is not needed, please disable this function to decrease the load of the router. The last part is number of WAN. You can flexibly change the number of WAN interfaces. After performing the save operation, you should restart the router for the change to take effect. Note that once restarted, the router is restored to factory default settings. Let's take a look. We can change the number of WAN ports here from 1 to 4. If we change it to 3 and save, a pop-up window will show up alerting that the router will be restored to factory default settings. OK, now let's take out the question, how to manage two subnets with the UTTP router. From topology, we know that the router has WAN IP 100.100.100.100. .100 .100 .100. LAN IP 192.168.1.1 Now what should we do? First, go to the LAN page under Network. Click Advanced Options. Set IP address 2 to 192.168.2.1 and save. Now connect all the office devices to the router through wires or wirelessly. Next, click DHCP server and go to DHCP auto binding. Make sure the DHCP auto binding is enabled. Now the office devices will be shown here. In our case, there is only one device, which is Tom's PC. Now please disable DHCP auto binding and save. Then find DHCP server page, change the DHCP start IP address to 192.168.2.100 and end IP address to 2.200 and gateway IP address to 2.1, then save. Now when any guest device connects to the router, it will automatically obtain an IP address in subnet 192.168.2.x, like this one. Note that if new office devices need to be added into the office subnet, please go to the DHCP server page, static DHCP, and click add here to add them in. If you want to know more about UTT products, you can always go to our website www.uttglobal.com. There you can find some other information like knowledge base and web GUI demo. As always, you can ask us questions at support at uttglobal.com. I hope this video is informative for you and I'd like to thank you all for watching.